My hunters are blue and dead, like they came straight out the cemetery. And I like red on the coupe, just like the heart I left way back in February. Haters don't know what to do, they try to read me, but I'm not the library. I don't just wanna be great, nigga, I wanna be legendary. All of my hunters are blue and dead, like they came straight out the cemetery. And I like red on the coupe, just like the heart Three, two, one. And we back, y'all. Say, we finally made it to episode two. This is where this our last show, me and Angie's closed down operations. <laughs> Goner. Look, y'all think we're gonna get to episode three? Four, five, six, six. Seven, this eight, shit nine. is lit, man. Yeah. Keep going. And if and if and if you haven't got a chance yet, y'all, I want y'all to make sure y'all go on to YouTube, search for the Raw True Show with Blurry Vision and Angie Akers. Subscribe, hit the post notifications. You ain't gonna miss nothing that we do. So how y'all doing, man? I'm glad to see y'all. I already know what Blurry's week's been like because I've been attached to his fucking hip. <laughs> How's your week been, Angie? Been good, man. Straight work. Just work, work, and work, and work. You know, I got like 12 jobs. Man, so, you know, hey, you, Tony Robbins said you need oh, multiple man. sources of income at once to become a millionaire. So I'm appreciate it. That's who you talking <laughs> Blair. Slowly but surely. What was your week like, Blair? <laughs> Fucking strenuous. I mean, it is what it is, but I mean, we can make it happen. Blurry's exactly. just like a rock of no sleep that just keeps churning forward, but he never stops. <laughs> yeah, I love it though, bro. You gotta be strong willed like that, man. So, all right, cool. I'm glad y'all in good health, and let's get right into the politics for this week, Angie. What yeah, we got? straight up. First thing first is coronavirus. Coronavirus. Corona. The U.S. has now surpassed four million COVID-19 cases, and experts are saying that it's probably gonna get worse, and so we could probably count on another shutdown. Ugh. You know what I mean? That shutdown fucking killed me last time. I don't right. know if I could do that shit again. What about y'all? No, man. That, it, it's just crazy. I just felt like stripped of everything. But then, but then, too, being stuck in the house, I did get to learn a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't all a negative. It's, it's like a long free vacation that yeah. I don't want again anytime soon. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I like to eat, too, so <laughs> keep them places open. You know what right, I mean? Right. Keep them open. We don't want to go back to this... It felt good for me to go and have like a sit down at, at Chili's and shit. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, just be smart about it. You know what I mean? Couple Dang. people in, couple people out. You know what I mean? So, what else we got? Uh, next up, we have the Republican National Convention. So, they were going to hold it in Jacksonville, as you guys know, but they decided to go ahead and shut it down. Mm. Um, seeing as what happened in Oklahoma, no one really showed up for the rally. So, I guess Trump's like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't do that. Plus, a lot of the Republicans from Florida anyway were like, we ain't coming. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect place. Yeah. Another inside joke. Hello there. Hello, Governor. So uh the thing about that to me that's funny is um it's like y'all y'all was the ones at first that was encouraging us like not to wear the mask. Now you're saying wear the mask so that we don't have to shut down again. But the thing is this shit ain't going nowhere anyways. Like, don't fucking yeah. punish all of us for the fucking few people that's not trying to curve the shit. Yeah. Right. It's basically, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck us in the long run. I mean, hell, but they're profiting off us anyway. You know, they make the mask. Listen, we buy them. Woke. Keep going. Woke. It's another thing that they're going to start selling more often. Now it's going to be another custom to your It seems attire. like they're trying to keep us at a certain pace, bro, because, like, you know the shit I believe in, bro. It's like, they keeping us at a certain pace and analyzing to see, like, hey, can we just tell them to do shit? And they do, because if so, then why the fuck we need a constitution? We just fucking herd them up, do what we say, or we turn your chip off. You know what I mean? That's I always believe the RFID chip coming next, so... Yes, yeah, it's, it's depressing times, but as long as we alive and got rules over our heads and shit like that... Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. There let's be go. great while we can. All right, cool. So we're gonna get right. Or do we have anything else? Is there? Um, only other thing is the tension between U.S. and China. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We yeah. gotta get into so, that real quick. Uh, U.S. demanded that China shut down a consulate in Houston. Um, so China was like, "All right, since y'all wanna do that, then we're gonna shut down the U.S. consulate in Chile." Mm. So. Sounds like it's like <laughs> it's almost it's almost gay, isn't it? So how they act towards each other. Oh shit, shoot down, so you shut me down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> look, look. Man, these motherfuckers are childish as fuck. Like what does that really do? Ring around a rosy. Just you got some motherfuckers that get to go back home and some 
people that get to come home. That's all it is, bring around the roses. And you're still going to pay them, so that's crazy. I, I think uh, I, I said this earlier, as far as China's concerned, like I know a lot of cool Chinese people and I fuck with them, but if it's fuck us, then it's fuck you too because... <laughs> yeah, man, y'all been fucking raping us on fucking tariffs and pricing and, and, and just literally devaluing our dollar on purpose to, to crash us out. Those are acts of war, like in my book. So the fact that we haven't went to war yet is surprising to me, but hopefully they work that shit out right. for all of our sakes. Right. Another fucking war. God damn. <laughs> World War Three, bro. I never thought I'd be alive for no, some shit like no. that. No, big part. Rebuke it out in the name of Jesus. All right, cool. So we're going to just run right into the rumor report with Angie. I know you got some juicy shit, man, some messy shit. What's, I mean, what is it? Just, of course, right off the rip, we got to talk about Kanye. So Kanye, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> president 2020. That's what he said. So what he did was he actually needed 25,000 like signatures in order to get on the ballot in Illinois mm. for the actual presidential uh, election. So he actually paid people $10 each for their signature. Now, he got the signatures and he got on the ballot in Illinois, but the messed up part is he missed the deadline for the other states. Ooh. <laughs> and there's no way around that for him to get on the ballot now? There's no way he can challenge that or... We gonna see. We gonna see what happens. So I mean, I know he. I want to see him run it, so. just because, but deep in the back of my mind, I was like, oh god, bro. If I feel like if Kanye gets in office, I mean, that's crazy though. Like, imagine what if he flips out and just change. says, execute everybody? Yeah, imagine how much dumb shit's gonna change. God damn, bro. Like, we would probably be having to wear potato skin clothes and shit. Like, the clothes he'd be making. Them hoes trash. I ain't gonna lie. Salute to Kanye, man. Them clothes is trash, but them Yeezys is fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, other thing we got up is Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. Hey, Jr. man, bro. I'm lit like a motherfucker pound over this. Pound fight. Yeah. Listen, yeah. man. It's, 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 tell me, Blurry, what do you feel like in you two, Angie? Have you ever seen a motherfucker that just man? I, I watch. I used to watch his old interviews, bro. He he's scary through the TV, like even even at his age. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking savage if he wants to be. Yeah. So, do you think there's any way Roy Jones Jr. wins this fight? Absolutely not. No, not, not at all. <laughs> woo, woo, not we got we, we got we got yeah. we got people on the couches like hell no. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> He only, he did have one fight at heavyweight, Roy Jones did, and he won a title. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he only did it once, and he did not defend it whole. And you know what they say, if you don't defend the title, you're not a real champion anyway. Truth. So Roy Jones Jr. is like, salute to him. He's like an iconic figure for me to grow up watching, but, you, bro, you, you can't fuck with Tyson, bro. No. He, he, they asked him, they said, hey, Mike, so, I mean, it's an eight-round exhibition, right? And they're talking about having to wear headgear because of the statues or whatever. They were asking Mike, Max Kellerman was like, yo, is it going to be like an exhibition? And Mike Tyson basically on some shit like, yo, somebody told me once before, like, you get in there, you could die in that bitch. So basically what he's saying is, is like, I'm coming to execute him like the old Mike Tyson. Yeah. Period. So, yeah, you can see that hunger in his eyes. So, all right, cool. What else we got, Ange? That's it. That's what we're going to roll straight into your favorite part. The favorite part of the show is that Raw MMA. Till dropped Whitaker in round one with an elbow. Whitaker dropped Till in round two. Round three was close, but Whitaker landed more strikes. Rounds four and five were also close. In the end, all the judges scored it 48-47 for Whitaker. In the co-main event, Shogun and Nogueira had another entertaining battle, but just like their other two fights, once again, Shogun wins by decision. This time, it was a split decision. This was Nogueira's final fight. Verdum spoils Gustafson's debut at heavyweight by tapping him out with an armbar in the first round. Gus was over a three to one favorite for this fight. Paul Craig gets a first round triangle choke win over Godzi Murata on Tagulov. Three of his last four wins have been by triangle choke. Hamza Chamaya breaks the USC record by scoring two wins in 10 days. He had a completely dominant performance over Reese McKee. He gets the first round TKO. He improves his undefeated record to 8-0. He's one of the brightest prospects at 170. In an entertaining back and forth fight, Twinaldo scores a third round TKO over Jai Herbert.
Tom Aspinall landed a great one two on Jay Collier. He scored a big KO in his UFC debut. He popped him and dropped him and won in 45 seconds. Mosar Evloev used good striking and takedown defense to pick up a decision over Mike Grundy. Tanner Bozer gets a second round stoppage over Rafael Pazoa. This is Bozer's second KO in less than a month. In a women's bantamweight contest, Piney Kianzad wins a unanimous decision over Betch Koea. Raw MMA. Y'all heard blurry visions, man. Look, we got we we always get the best news on that. Um, I know y'all just got done watching the video, so y'all are caught up on everything. But I just want to give I want to give my personal reflection of fight night last night. So Robert Whitaker defeated Dan Till. Me and Blurry watched that shit together. That was a hell of a fight. Um, I think Darren Till could have won that, don't you think, Blair? If he would have had a harder fifth um, round, he just needed to keep his fucking hands up. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't keep his hands up in time. Um, too many key punches. I mean, Robert Whitaker fast as fuck. Whitaker, see how you just you see them kicks? He's too agile <sighs> and he's too quick and he's too abstract. So you're not gonna beat that. You, you literally have to be the same style or better. And you know Robert Whitaker was number one already contender, so it's guaranteed whoever wins out of Israel Adesanya and. Um, uh, who is he fighting? Uh, Paula Costa. See, nobody remembers Paula Costa. You gotta look his fucking name up. But, who's, I, who's Paula Costa? Bro, he's just a dude that looks like, he looks like Ricky Ricardo, but on fucking <laughs> steroids, bro. And he is a monster. I think he's gonna run through, uh, Israel Adesanya. But anyways, uh, so jumping in, uh, we got to watch the Battle of the Fucking Dinosaurs, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Mauricio Shogun Rua and uh, Rogero uh, Noriega. They are old. They are decrepit right now. Man, bro. <laughs> watching that shit was painful. Like, you can hear the vertebrae of their backs rubbing each other. Like, these motherfuckers too old for this shit. Was it a full fight? Hell yeah. I'm like, where the fuck y'all get 25 minutes of energy from at this age? But it was cool just to watch them because we, we watched the first ones they ever had. Now, those were battles motherfucker yeah. angie heads ricocheting off the fucking mat like it was violent between them two so they both had one up on each other and this was the they're both gonna retire tiebreaker and i made it you niggas all mad now dated these niggas be claiming they shooters most of y'all federal agents Book me for a show, send me the payment. Don't hit the booth for entertainment. I was selling them packs at your job. Jack of all trades is an understatement. Recognizing the hate and be blatant, they try to keep me in the basement. But just like a scary movie, I'll leave and come back and get you like Jason. Hey, d boss I need some proper grammar on that. Proper grammar, please? I can provide that for you, Mr. <laughs> Truth. Acquire yourself a ruler. You are a minuscule harlot. I encourage you to measure up to my immense street credibility, which has been obtained by a long life of causing trouble and participating in a hooligan life like lifestyle. I'm aware of my surroundings at all times. With that being said, I am surveying you, surveying me. Yes. And offer the sternest of warnings against irritating or plotting on me in any way. Okay. If those warnings are not heeded immediately, yeah. it is very possible that you could be victimized by my 40 caliber okay. firearm that is always on my person. Thankful for a brand new beginning in my career, I am looking forward to retiring the mass collective of artists in the community who harbor feelings of ill and resentment against me. Ooh. This most likely comes from their own personal feelings of becoming obsolete. Facts. Although many recording artists perpetrate a lifestyle of executing other rappers physically, it has been proven <laughs> that many are fake in cahoots with the federal government. Facts! In Hello. order to maximize my own financial potential, <laughs> I encourage booking agents to quickly compensate me <laughs> for my time and my talents. As I do not believe in booking studio time merely to procrastinate. Yes, I have about my business. I'll bet my business. I have participated in many avenues of furthering my own network, one of them being selling being the selling of illegal narcotics at many different legit workplaces. I am able to adapt to any surrounding I am into furthering my own agenda. 
Although many have come against me in an attempt to discourage me from displaying my God-given talents, yes, I periodically regroup and await my opportunity to return swiftly and cut through the competition. Let go. Metaphorically speaking, I am the rap Jason Voorhees of the industry. <laughs> and that, my friends, is proper grammar. Thank you, Truth. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Proper grammar, y'all, with Douglas <laughs> Elliott. Every time we give a hand for that. Thank you. We done once again made it to the most legendary part of the show, right? I want to introduce y'all to a personal homeboy of mine, somebody who I highly respect, somebody that I have watched his music touch the entire world, like reach out and touch different country, countries all over this bitch, man. Big salutes, man, from the Raw True Show to my man PJ Ricochet. Oh man, you know I ain't shit. <laughs> Big, big, big boy status, man. We're yeah. glad you came through, bro. Like, we really appreciate it. Hey, man, shout out to you and Blurry, man. Shout out to Angie Aikens. Shout out to the whole Dark Phoenix Radio crew. You know, man, thanks for having me on. You know what I'm talking about? The Raw Truth Show. You know, it's an honor to be here, bro. I really appreciate that, man. And vice versa, bro. I got yeah. nothing but love for you. A lot of respect. You know, I've seen you work. I re and I really appreciate, man, just, you know, on some... Some off air type of shit. I just appreciate you rocking with me through the whole process of my growth, and I hope I've been there for you as well. And uh, yeah, we we having a crazy 2020 this year, man. And I wanna uh, I wanna really jump right in and and get and start touching on your 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 backstory, right? So, how many al albums do you have? Studio albums all together? Um, I would say probably about six. It would probably be about six, but probably a little bit more than that. Probably like eight. So when did you when did you know that this was gonna be a career thing for you? Man, um, really kind of after my first I had signed a little like a little local Dallas deal with this label and after like not knowing shit about contracts and not being able to put out music for like a couple of years because you signed a contract that yeah. was fucked up. After that is when I was like, yeah, I probably need to stop just looking at this shit. It's just some passion shit. And probably learns about my publishing and how split sheets and shit work, mm. you know. So, so for right those, after that, this was back in like 2005, 2006. So we, so, so we, so we talking about the the early 2000 or mid 2000 era, right? What I want to ask you is, for those y'all that are fucking deaf, dumb, or stupid and been living under a rock. Tell them about the song that you had that went worldwide. And uh, tell me about, I know you probably get asked about this all the time, but there's a lot of new viewers that tune in through our show that come from different things. They're going to be looking you up. They're going to see how big you were then and how big you're getting again now. Tell them about your big hit. Oh, man. You know, I didn't do nothing but create a little song called Clean as a Whistle. Mm. You know. Um, I can instantly hear the fucking whistle in my head to that bitch. Legendary. You know, Legendary. Um, that was the first record that really, you know, solidified me as um, an artist that can make a banger that can like make everybody know every word. You know what I'm saying? People were going like, people, people, I used to see people like, you know, I wear, a lot of people know I wear J's. I got on J's right now. You know, I, them shits is I clean do, too, by I the way. Do, I do like, <laughs> yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. I do like wear different shoes, but my signature that everybody know me for was rocking J's because that was the first line in the song. Right. You know what I'm saying? Talking about J's, you know. So you gotta practice what you preach, don't you? You know, J's on the feet. You know, we we all and you know, you know, uh, wanted to give people, you know, exactly how a reality is like, or you know, how it really is, you know, what right. they really wearing and shit like that. So I couldn't be rapping about wearing. Exclusive ones or exclusive elevens and shit like that. And you see me in some dusty ass forces, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Air Force Ones, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But dusty ass Air Force Ones, if I was like, you know. So, I mean, that first line is very important because everybody associates that with me. Right. You know? I, what I loved about that song was, I remember where I was at when I heard this bitch, bro. And you're probably going to be shocked, right? I don't know if anybody ever told you this, so. Remember Cowboys Blurry? Bro, you Man. never get in that bitch either. That bitch was never lit. let me in the house. That yeah, bitch I was over here about Cowboys. Yeah, so um, 
you know, that was kind of my spot, man. I was right down the street staying in Meadowbrook Park, so I go up there on whatever night, and um, they have just at the very end, you know, they only play like the hottest shit hip-hop-wise, right? Right. And I mean, it's only literally like two or three songs, right? But they, they would play that bitch every single week. <clears throat> What I liked about that shit too was it was a part of like that that era where a lot of people don't know, and if you don't know, you need to affiliate yourself more with PJ Ricochet's music on all outlets. The clean as a whistle to me is more like an anthem as far as like party shit, right? But to see you come back all these years later, and I want to jump right into this, man, top of the motherfucking year. Bruh. That's that's hard to say it's not your favorite PJ Ricochet song. I mean, I would think most people would agree. How? Well, do you feel like that's that's when you really felt like you were coming back into the game after this yeah, hiatus? Yeah, man, I was talking a lot of shit. Like, I was really upset with um, a lot of things that were going on. And uh, from the, I just it really kind of snapped one day I heard the beat. And I had thought about everything that I went through from 2010 to 2019, you know, going through gastrointestinal problems, mm -hmm. grandmother having four heart attacks, father having a heart attack, mm -hmm. my uncle having a stroke passing away, losing another uncle stroke passing away, mm -hmm. having to sell my, my grandmother's house, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, uh, you know, she's in a senior living facility, you know, we trying to Get, make sure she got 24-hour care, so we trying to, you know, uh, that, that those were things that I was going through, real-life situations where we had to, like, you know, really. So I guess coming from that and coming coming back after everybody turned their back on me, feeling like, not everybody, but a lot of people turned their back on me, coming back from all of that, it just made me feel like a breath of fresh air. And I really think, uh, you know, that's some shit you should celebrate. I, I be celebrating your victory through that song. You know, I, I throw that bitch on and that bitch just gets me lit. It made me feel like anything's possible. So as a fan too, man, like, uh, that, 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 I have it uh, down to these two. Look, I have, I have my top three picks on, on the, my favorite songs in your career, right? Yeah. Shut the fuck up, bitch. All right, so... My favorite top three PJ Ricochet songs are Miss Runway with the row. Um, that bitch is just lit. Like, it have a lot of energy. I like that one. Top of the year, I'm going to put as number two. Um, and what do you think my number one one is? Boy, uh, I think I have told you about this motherfucker a couple times. Oh, God, I wonder if. Deep. I wonder if. Look, yeah. no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if. I wanted to get the story. Everybody asking you about the top of the year. I already know about the top of the year. That bitch is just running shit. Don't need to speak too much on it. I want to know about this song, uh, I Wonder If, because that bitch, for me, I don't know, man, just gave it that do or die feel, but the, the way you was spitting on it, that's my favorite style that you do, because it's not really like Twister, but it's not like regular Ricochet. It's somewhere on the in-between, but that shit is the shit you could bump at like 2, 3 a.m., Mm -hmm. Like just slow motion through the city, that bitch just made me feel crunk. Like, tell me the story behind that bitch. Um, man, I was like dead broke. Mm. Like I had lost everything. This night. was after. This was after Clean as a Whistle. Mm. So, I mean, Clean as a Whistle was like still kind of moving, but I don't know. It was just a different time period. Right. And so. I was thinking about, you know, all the love that I showed, all the support that I showed people, you know what I'm saying, like, all the respect, you know, going here, going there, going everywhere, and then feeling like everybody just kind of just like said, fuck you and forgot about you and felt like you wasn't shit no more. You wasn't even really gone that long, that's why I try to tell a lot of y'all, man, a lot of y'all are really built to withstand this pressure. Hell, you know what I mean? Y'all better. <laughs> Like People rappers. think we just rap. Like, did you did y'all hear what he just said? Like, how much shit been thrown at him in a small period of time? Like, that's part of it. Plus, we gotta deal with niggas talking shit that you yeah. know that that just be peons that'll get crushed like an ant in real life. That plus all that, it's like as a rapper, you have to take on a lot and you gotta spend a lot of money. T tell them about. How, how hard that really is to juggle all those things because I think they think we just get in the booth and rap and shit and it's supposed to be easy 
Man, say, bro, when you got kids and, you know, you trying to stay out of jail or dumbass shit, you know, you got, you know, you trying to keep your business on, on point, you know, you probably got a brand or something like that, you trying to keep that shit together, you know, you trying to, you know, really navigate after a record that has been off the radio and you trying to figure out, like, what markets is really fucking with you still getting shows booked in places where you know you can still get booked but then overall feeling like fuck I gotta come with another record like ASAP mm. but then when you know Pressure. that but when you know that you ain't got your business all the way in order at the time and you know that you don't really know your publishing and you don't know how that shit go mm. you know you start saying man you know what I might need to like take some time and like learn how to do this shit learn with my royalties my mechanical royalties my you know learn about my percentages on my split sheets and learn about you know making sure that my business is right making this sure i know i'm talking it all. it's the bread and butter of it all y'all out here think that it's about the music bro it's a lot of trash ass music bro that is going platinum dumb stupid million dumb. streams 10 million streams should be trash it's because of marketing i mean this is it bro this, the, the, the rap game is not cliche it's cousin to the crack game it ain't all up and on the up and up and all on the, you know what I'm saying? This is a wild, Some people a just give that game. image, you know what I mean? They give that image like, you know what I mean? It's, but it's grimy out here, man. But you gotta work, you know what I'm saying? But I wonder if it was basically like, would I get the same love, you know, when it was my time? Right. You know, and so. And when and when you had Clean as a Whistle Pop, right? It was all around the time you wrote that song? Nah, man, this was after Clean as a Whistle. So, so what had if, been out like, I had wrote Clean as a Whistle in like 2007. So what if is a reflection of just your first original blow up? Exactly. The I guess that's one. why I like it so much because I've experienced my own, you know, going viral moments and shit and, and getting record deals. And I think that's why I relate to that song so much because I wondered if the same mm -hmm. things. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wonder, it, 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 are you ever going, with all the time and shit, you invest in it and shit as well, are you ever going to get to where you want to go, you know that Jay Z, that yeah. Nas level, or is it destined for you to just be a, a a local icon? You know what I'm saying? So I deal with them things a lot, but that song just give me motivation. Like who fucking cares? Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, you know, you know, talking about uh, you know that that line where I say uh, all these niggas uh, walking up to me after my show. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but if I flop. Off of one club track, they won't even pick up their phone. Facts. You know, like that's, you know, that's how I was feeling at the time. You know, I drop a record, they ain't even gonna pick up their phone no more. They ain't gonna fuck with me. They gonna think I'm, you know, cause I'm trying to do something different. I got a lot of different records. I got records that's not even club records. It's like they want to fucking rush you. Give me another hit, no, bitch. Wanna, now, now, now. now. They, no, they want, no, they want to put you in a box and they don't want you to jump out of that box. You know, every artist that crossed over or tried to cross over. And the streets always didn't support that because yeah. they want you to be a certain way. Um, you know, I went through that too. So look, my man Blurry got a couple questions for you. Yeah, what's up, Blurry? And that over to him. I, I really don't the have so much to say. So Blurry going to ask you a couple questions, and I just want you to answer them as honestly as possible. Bit. Couple questions. Couple questions. All right. Question number one. When did you start rapping, and what was your early musician or musical motivation? Oh wow, man, that's a great question. Nice, great question. So um, I started rapping when I was like 14. First rap I wrote was for my mom on Mother's Day. I can't even remember it, but I remember writing it, you know. And um, then, like, really, like me being, I'm musically inclined all the way around. Yeah. A lot of people don't know, uh, but like, you know, I'm I'm a drummer too. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Big so, beats. You know, uh, music has always been something that you know was a part of me. Like I could never not do music. You know, my son is following my footsteps right now. My mom, and my dad. Shout out to Little Rico, man. Shout out to Little Rico, man. Little Rico. You know what I'm saying? He he's he's following in my footsteps with the music. But yeah, like I started early on, man. My mom was teaching me how to play the piano when I was three. You know, and um, I went to Dallas School of Music for a couple of years. Oh, so you got history, history of music. Yeah, Big you know, history. I was, I was uh, through school, you know, I was, uh, I was, you know, 
playing the drums and stuff like that. But I was always in trouble. Mm. Like, I was bad as fuck. Like that. I was, it'd be like that. I was like stealing. That I was stealing everybody lockers, buying candy, selling it back to them. Look, you jumping know, right into that. that. Look, that was perfect. You, 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 Rico yeah. hit the perfect time. Look, so. A lot of people wonder how me and Rico got cool, man. Oh, man. Let me Same. tell you first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the goddamn... Hey, them Steelers trash, Rico. I just man, wanted to tell you that face-to-face. When was the last time, man? Bro, if y'all ever seen... When the last time y'all saw... The last time y'all saw the championship, bro? And shout out to everybody, it's man. I'm a, a Dallas while. Mavericks fan. It's been a little while. I'm a Rangers fan. You know, uh... He ain't fucking with know, them boys, I'm though. I'm not fucking with... I'm not fucking with uh, <laughs> Jerry and them, man. Jerry's world, man. I'm not fucking with it. So a lot of people don't know. Like, I think we knew each other or knew of each other for like a year before that. And we would chime in here and there. But, man, I had gotten my feelings real bad because cause Rico had said something. Man, the way this nigga talk, bro, it'll make you <laughs> fucking furious how he does it, bro. Because he'll, he'll intricately talk shit. Like, he'll, he'll really just make you... And, turn, and then you'll become mad at the Cowboys and mad at him at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I had clapped at him with some fucking, like, man, watch, whatever it was, some shit, like, oh, you got to the, the, quit talking, right, you from he, Dallas or some shit, how you gonna talk yeah, shit like, about I'm them? I'm from Dallas to talk about the Cowboys. I said, nigga, they don't even play out here. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> hey, they play we, in your city. We started, we, we started having words back and forth, and then, but that's, that's the thing, bro, it's like, when you, when you can tell if a motherfucker's a lion, I think we both said that in each other immediately, and we was like, Rico said some shit, man. He started making me feel like he was sunning me because he was like, this, this man got knowledge, man. I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Football, bro. Look, he's like, yeah, and then the way he hit, he's like, it's football. When he hit that bitch, I was like, yeah, this shit is bullshit. What we arguing about this shit for? <laughs> and then right out of nowhere, I mean, as quick as it, it, as it came, it went. I still don't fuck with them whole ass Steelers, but I fuck with my man Ricochet though. That's hey, my man. dog. It's all right, man. Just know we got more rings than y'all. Just know we've been in a championship more than y'all. We've been to a conference championship more than y'all in the past decade or two. Hey, how many, how many, how many superstars y'all got over there right now? I mean, we, we don't have a lot, but we still there it is. to the we Ooh, still can make it to the playoffs. <laughs> we didn't make it to the playoffs, but but no, actually, as a matter of fact, we didn't make it to the playoffs. But we came from a zero and three deficit to end up. Well, look, a lot of a lot of people. Y'all had the top. Y'all had what three and oh? What are three and oh? A lot of people. And, oh. and then what it was y'all? What, what y'all y'all? What about that? What about year, that right? twelve and goddamn one uh, season we was having with Dak? What, what about did we, it? Didn't we run through you niggas? Didn't what, Zeke run right through you niggas? Woo! That was, that was a highlight reel of a lifetime right what, there. But what, but what about it? Y'all supposed to be America's team. Y'all got to get a dub over us. We got the most recent dub, don't we? Y'all do got the most recent dub, but y'all don't have the most recent ring. Mm. So that's what it matters. See, that's always y'all's excuse, the Cowboys haters, about the, the, the damn rings. Fuck the rings. We got another. So the thing about Dak, man, is he showed us, like, that he could be great for a season he but that's showed it. you that he was he, trash and he showed you that he could try to make a, he had a he weird ass block. exercise bullshit on the sidelines if we get and another quarterback no though train, we get a super trash. bowl if we get another quarterback we get a super bowl ring yeah. you know that right with you know that right <laughs> with who man come on look at everybody we got sean lee and we got vander ash sean now. lee what you mean bro he's still fired Bro, Sean Lee is not. Bro. He's fire. He he putting niggas in fucking caskets when he tackles niggas, man. Hey, you gonna let Sean Lee wake it, man? He's fire. Old timer. What about Van Der Esch? That's his replacement Esch, right there. I mean, Van Der Esch was he was nice last season. Look, people don't even know we had a private conversation. I'm about to expose it right now. I got to. Why you hate them so bad for? Cause I hate Jerry, bro. But you was a Cowboys fan. No, I was just a fan that, st I was just a person that stayed in Dallas that because they were the Dallas Cowboys, I kind of had to watch the Dallas Cowboys. So you ain't never like them. You don't, I you never don't, had a you jersey. Don't, I never had a hat. You don't hat, want to root for them? Never had a, never, never been to the game, never been to a game. None of that. Never, none, none of that, bro. They were just, they were there and that was the team that was for Dallas. Man, when the bus got traded to the uh, Steelers from the Rams, that was like my favorite, bro. He ran, bro. Who was fucking with the bus? Who was fucking with Jerome Bennis, bro? Man, he fire and all that, but who the hell have more stars Cordell. on their team? Bro, Michael Cordell Irvin, Stewart. Alvin Harper, yeah. Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith. Boy, we can Bulls, Sugar, 
bandits. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Booger sugar bandits. You know they gonna say what they wanna say about Ben, Robert but they, Burger. you know they, yeah, right, right. They Burger. gonna say Ben was a rapist and all that, but they did a toxic, I mean not a toxic college, They did a medical examination of that girl and found out that he did not. I rape think, that I girl. think she, I think she big front. I don't think Ben did shit, but still, still is right. still trash. Damn it, Ben. What we believe you, whatever what, we want look at y'all symbol. When it comes on CNN, what the hell is y'all symbol? When it comes on CNN, we believe what we want to believe. Hold on, what the hell is y'all's damn symbol? What the fuck is that? It's, it's just some Steelers. fucking random stars. Steel. Oh, what is bro, a Steeler? Our fam is one of the biggest manufacturers, bro. The biggest so manufacturer. Y'all, y'all cheering on like a Dickies or something like that. No, fam. <laughs> what, what are y'all cheering for, bro? Man, we cheering for the mighty star. The y'all mightiest cheering for all. America's team, bro. Hello, but y'all haven't had a ring since team. 19. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Bro, the last time y'all had a ring, bro, VHS tapes, bro, I was snatching, <laughs> snatching the tape out of VHS tapes. Bro, that's Say, eight. Like, hey, but get it right. We won like three of them bitches in a row, though. Bro, Five in total. It doesn't matter. Bro, we like one week behind y'all. 95, fam. CD players weren't... I don't even think CD players had came out yet. Man, I bet Ben be deflating them balls like Tom Brady bitch ass do. No, definitely not. They would have caught him by now. That, that was cute, though. I like that. They tried to call it in that real slide move like, hey, hey, hey. How you, you sir? Bro, your own owner, bro, pushed out dude, a dude that got him a ring the year before he won the, when he won the Super Bowl. Made him leave the year after he got the Super Bowl because they couldn't agree. Y'all have the only owner that stands. Well, what would you expect us camera. to do about it? Bro, y'all you, have the uh, only owner. You 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 give bro. us a commitment right now that you're going to diss Jerry Jones on a song. I'm and gonna, I'll hop on that bitch with you. I diss dance on a song already. What was it called? The, I did that Skid It, Lil Pump remix. <laughs> Throw away an X like Jerry it's did Skid It. Throw away an X like Jerry did dance. Yeah. Damn, man, that shit's brutal. They didn't throw this away. They yeah, said, fuck you, away. sir. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. He caught it. He did catch it. Derek, when Jerry is dead in the dirt, that's when I would root for the Cowboys, bro. I, I, and I think that's where we could find music. And I'm not, and on. I, I understand the frustration. And, and I'm not even Jones. sure. And I'm not even sure if that whatever. And when I say rude, I'm talking about I ain't gonna talk shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> halfway go for it. That's All right, it. jumping back into the to the questions, blurry. What do you got for uh, Ricochet? I know we had about ten questions. We on number two. We on number two right now. What is your favorite song from your catalog? Yeah. Oh man, well, I'm, I'm curious about that. Um, I got a record called Foolish Dreaming with a lot of Richie sample. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Okay. What album is it on? Uh, or if you drop it on, uh, It's on The Plane Way, which I'm dropping The Plane Way. It's a mixtape. But I'm dropping The Plane Way on all streaming platforms. Even with the sample on there, I don't give a shit. Give a fuck. Lionel Richie, give let's it to fuck me. Let's, you, Lionel. Let's, 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 let's figure out how we get that clear. Let's sit down and talk about Lionel it, Lionel, right before we show up at your door over the sample. Nah, we we're just do playing. Don't be, don't be threatening Lionel Richie on Let me line. find out Lionel, Lionel, Lionel fear. Put a Lionel little fear in you. Hey, look, 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 you tried to throw it on me. You <laughs> said it. I was, I was, I was, hey, I'm trying to set you up for the okie doke. You caught me. Nope, that ain't happening. No, but but we're going to throw that we gonna throw that up there, man. That's my favorite record. Cause okay. it's just all the way different. I need to check that one out. That's, yeah, that's one, up, one you time. You go check it out on uh, yeah. it's on YouTube. You know, you can go check it out on Audio Mac. It's on there. Audio Mac and that YouTube, y'all. Audio Mac and YouTube. PJ Ricochet. That Piff, that too. You know. And that Piff. Yeah. And what we got for number three, Blur? Let's see, for number three, we got us a good one. What is your deepest regret mm. in music? In deepest the game regret. right now? Man, I did a song called Don't Regret It. So oh, nice. Right. <laughs> well, well, I don't it. have no regrets. You know what I'm saying? Just lessons. You know what I'm talking about? Just learn lessons. Learn how to you know, navigate through this business. And learn how to not make the same mistakes more than once. Or maybe you might make it twice. But That's a really good answer, know. too, because... I mean, that's the only answer. To be honest with you, you wouldn't be who you were if nah, if you could have weaved some of those things. Nah, I had to go through it to get me here. Makes you the person you are today. Yeah. All right, let me number see. four. Um, number four would be, what is your greatest accomplishment? Man, my greatest accomplishment. Man, I'm going to be all the way honest with you. My greatest accomplishment to me is being able to say that, you know, I've been in full rotation on the radio. Mm. That's your dope. Not That's just be no big show, not just no worldwide no time on a contest that you won. No, like different areas, different regions of the world. My, my shit done played on the radio somewhere. Like, yeah. you know, even music now. I'm in like several states right now. So, mm. those are big accomplishments right now. Now, that's not, those are not the comp, that's not my ceiling. Like, I want a plaque. I want a plaque. 
I want a black, trophy. Black, black, black. You know it's what time. I'm saying? You know, whatever. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all say it don't matter, but you know. I need me a couple plaques. I need me a couple plaques because I see. I what could I use a gold or maybe a platinum. You know, hey, speaking an of Oscar or something like that, I would like that because I see people, our other counterparts that aren't the same race as us. I see a lot of them have those. So mm. yes, you know, I like it's to true. have that too. Just for being honest. So number five. Number five. What are your favorite five? Scary movies. Ooh, and I wrote that on purpose. I'm Started waiting for you. Baby, they better be good. Five, let's go five to one. Weakest okay. to the best. Weakest to the best, 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts. Mm, okay, that's I one of my say, favorites. Dope, dope cinema, cinematography. It really is. Uh, but that's why I, I named it top five, but it's number five. It's yeah. an original story, too. So now we're going to get to the ghosts. scary shit. Now we're going to get to the scary shit. Okay, what's number four for you? Um, The Grudge. Mm. Grudge, okay, yeah, that, that shit got me. That first one fucked me up. And you have to watch the ones. Uh, you first have to watch the ones that. <laughs> and you get like scared the real over Japanese, the real, real deal ones with no English. You have yeah. to watch those. Oh, yeah, the ones yeah. that you can't yeah. even over. know what's going on yeah. at all. So that's number four. Um, number three. Man, hey, I'm going to tell you something. I was really, really kind of surprised, even though I didn't really like the ending. I was really kind of surprised. What you got? Uh, the it, the second it. Second Man. it had me. Yeah. I was the scared the whole time because that was one of my favorites, and I'm like, if they fuck this up, the dude. second it was all right. It was okay. Now, oh wow, I'm hit y'all with something crazy. This number number two, three, Ooh. three. You oh. skipped three, seven. No, 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 I did five. Five was out. Uh -uh. Thirteen goes. Thirteen goes. Number four was grudge. Grudge. Number three. Three. Second it. This it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I number got two. It. Now, number two, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, man, I'm going to give it to him because, you know, I know how it is being an independent filmmaker and also being black, mm. you know, and... Get uh, out. No, that wasn't really scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but Us, out. the movie Us. Us was a trip. Us was and it a trip, crazy, thriller-ish, not, I mean, not horror movie, but yes, but no, but more creepy than anything. Kept you on the edge of Man, Jordan Peele, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's dope. Shouts out to Jordan Peele. Uh, up, I think in the climate the that we're in, we need to be uplifting more people of color that are great filmmakers. One of the too. greatest directors. Um, so, yeah. Very Shout icy. Out. Number Shout one. Out. Number one. Y'all know I'm about like real, real like, horror movies. Now, I know everybody ain't going to, might not agree, but I don't care. The Exorcist. Wait. The director's cut like the director's cut exorcist the original Sorry. exorcist like the, i'm so glad that you had a good one for number one because I'm, I'm i'm the horror movie guru in this fucking circle right Hello. Hello. so the regular exorcist i'm impressed by the list the regular one is not the regular one is not the director's um, cut go ahead and give you all that extra info the, no i give you the extra info but the director's cut that motherfucker you could be looking at the, shit at you. and then some shit just gonna pop up on the screen mm. like mm. I, i've been trying to find it i'm gonna go find I'm gonna go, i might watch it tonight but that's my favorite movie i'm a big horror movie Fans. Good so solid list, about. Rico, coming from somebody that knows this genre like no other. Oh, yeah. Blurry, you know what? We're gonna extend it out just just a minute or two because I want your five fave and I want my five fave top five scary movies, Blurry ever. We're gonna start from five. Let's see. I'm gonna go with um, yeah. Don't laugh. The Leprechaun. No, uh, no. Okay. The first okay. one was scary first one, for yeah, sure. Yeah, though. Okay. Yeah, they, they got that crazy with the with the with the. With the I want uh, me go, son. Going to space, and different shit like that. They did get kind of crazy, but now, I'll give you that number the one. The very first one, first one was the funniest one, uh, the Leprechaun Saga. Yeah. I mean, that shit just had me at the edge of my seat. I was young too when I saw it, so that shit got me. Um, number four, that kept me at the edge of my seat. Uh, have y'all ever seen Invisible Man? Hell yeah, Kevin Bacon. Mm -hmm. That shit tripped hey, me fire. the fuck out. I said, hold up, yeah. wait, 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 wait. He, he, That's he, the general rule to horror, though, Blurry. That's why I said these people make mistakes by trying to make them more and more gory. Sometimes it's the shit no, that you don't creepy, see creepy, that creeps you out the most. Shit. Yeah, yeah, dude. Imagine um, that shit. The, the, Being the chased picks, by something you, know, you can't see. Or you like, you know, like how they got the screen where you like walking and it's showing you walking and yeah, yeah. you walking something in the back. Yeah. It's like going across the back. Yeah. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's more of It's the, that mind boggling uh, mind, shit that you're looking at. Yeah, the um, mind fucks of the, of the TV. Shout out to yeah. Kevin Bacon. I think, and I'm the biggest, I'm talking about I own the glove from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. 
literally. Okay. That's how serious I take that shit, right? Okay. I have that glove. I'm gonna bring it up here on the next episode. So, what say is saying something about Kevin Bacon? Kevin Bacon is the only one I'm cool with taking over the Freddy Krueger franchise. Boy, he would do perfect, bro. He would do he got the look. He got the Freddy Krueger oh. look. He's fucking scary. I didn't looking. know they was finna try to make another one. They they're bringing a whole franchise back, but they looking for the right actor. But rumor has it is, you know, what I'm saying we're Angie. Rumor has it. You know what yeah, I ain't get on. That that they looking at Kevin Bacon, but this that that shit's been a rumor for so many years. You just never know. But Kevin Bacon said he's interested. Man, that'd be dope. I go see it for real. I mean, I wasn't really scared of Freddy Krueger movies. Everybody be like, was that scared. first one was that scary. Was scary. I'm I'm like, maybe about the, the first script. one, the first one, yeah. Because he wasn't funny at all. He was like on some terrify you right. shit. Yeah, we yeah. gonna get into that though. But what you got for number three? For number three and number two. Number two, my bad. Number two, um. And if we skip one, we owe you one, fans. Okay. Thank you, Don't sir. Worry about it. Let's see, I got one call. Have y'all ever seen Slenderman? Slenderman, I heard. Man, Slenderman. hell no, nah, that hoe is trash. Did, you, you didn't watch the whole thing? No, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched some of it. Yeah, you gotta watch the whole thing. I, so, so, you know, Slenderman was an actual story for a long it, time, it right? Was, it scared yeah, the shit out of people. But the only bad thing I didn't like about it is the crossover between that and uh, what's the one that Ricochet just said? But they said the seven Exorcist. days. No oh, ring. Yeah, the ring. They have like a, a crossover between that. It's like they get on the internet, and instead of they get the phone call, they get like they watch the internet video. The same shit happens. So like I, it, it came out after the ring too. Oh, so this like Slender Man. Yeah, Slender yeah, 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 yeah. Incorporated that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. I mean, I, I watched it, and I was like, you know, it was a little bit creepy. It was pretty good. What you got for number two, though? I mean, number one. Number one. Number one. I would have to say. Hmm. Like top of the line scary. You supposed to know you're number one. I, nah, nah, nah. Cause I'm, I'm having a battle Those right now. Those are facts. No, I'm having a, I'm having a battle right now. I've got three right now that want to say number one, but you can only choose one, sir. What really scared the shit out of me? You, 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 here it goes. You ready? Yeah, here it goes. Are you ready? Final dun, destination. Dun. What? Final okay. destination. All right. I that shit that. ain't scary at all. No, nah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. The first Hell one, no. Hey, the, the first one after the blur, first one at, the 3D, at the 3D movie. The I guess if one. you get panic attacks about thinking about your own mortality, it would fuck yeah, with you real bad. The first one. Oh, yeah. The first one. It was oh, yeah. No, it was the <laughs> first. It's, the, it's the, always the first one because it had never been done. Final Destination, nobody was doing the shit. The first like one. That. You know what I'm saying? But I'm about bad. to. Not all 10 of them, just the first one. So look, I'm about to fuck y'all up. Y'all know. I take this shit serious. I have a framed prick picture of yeah. the 1989. <laughs> Listen, Freddy Krueger. So look, I'm gonna give y'all my top five scariest ones ever, right? Listen, number five, Carrie. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> nah, number five, man. I'm gonna roll with a Serbian film, bro. If you haven't seen that shit, it's hard to watch. Like Human Centipede, it's hard to watch. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to watch Serbian film. Look that shit up. Number four. I'm gonna roll with the original It miniseries, yeah. the two-parter. Okay. It was something about Tim Curry, dude. Like Tim Curry was, he's a thought-off individual. It's just different. Even I still think Tim Curry as It. You remember at the very beginning of It, Angie, who's off screen. You remember when Tim Curry, uh, when he was It, and at the very beginning, it was a little girl going, and and mm -hmm. the clothes were hung up and shit, mm -hmm. and like. The clothes move out the way, and then the little girl sees it, and, and he's like laughing at her and waving at first, but the second time he's like, <sighs> but I was like, when I saw that shit as a kid, bro, yeah. I used to be terrified of fucking sewers, bro. Yeah. I would literally walk in the middle of the fucking street and expect to hear like Georgie calling me through the fucking things. Yeah. Shout out to Tim Curry, <laughs> man. Yeah. Number three, I'm gonna have to say The Grudge as well, man. That shit is a pretty fucking scary movie. Man, that, that noise, that, man. Uh, that, that, like, yeah. that, that, uh, fuck with me, man. And then I'm like, yo, when you break it down, though, it just goes to show you how effects can terrify people. Like, in real life, all they're doing, and, and Blurry can tell you this for film and videos, she's just throwing her hair in front of her face, and she's going up like this. Yeah. And that's it, and the rest is effects. Well, yeah, minus, you know, the makeup. But it's just crazy, you know what I mean? So, yeah, get him number three, okay. Number two, I'm going to give to As Above, So Below. Man, that movie's fucking I put Blurry dirty. onto that. Talk that shit, Blurry. Mm -hmm. Is it fire or not? Put it like this. Don't ever smoke too much before you watch that shit because then you're stuck up watching this Can't shit. Sleep, out of it. Can't sleep. Panic attack. They're inside of a fucking tie hole. Bro, watch that. Yeah, you see that, Rico? 
Nah, bro. bro, go home and watch as, a, as Above, so below. so Below. As Above, So Below. It's right. about the catacombs underneath Europe, and, and they're like chasing the Holy Grail, but they stumble upon to pretty much the ninth circle of hell by accident, and they're yeah. going deeper into the circles and don't even know. So oh, it's, wow. yeah, it's fucking oh, yeah, scary. I that. And yeah. then number one, my motherfucking man, Robert England. Shout out to Wes Craven for making my childhood what it was. Freddy Krueger is always going to be the scariest, bro. Freddy. Let me tell you why. The way Robert England, if, if you look at the first one, they had, uh, I think it was a, a $100,000 budget for that first movie. Yeah. You know when Freddy's like in the, in, in the chasing Tina through the alley mm -hmm. and, and his arms. What was that first one again? And number one. Motherfucking shout out to Robert England, shout out to Wes Craven. Them motherfuckers were the authors of my nightmares coming up as a kid. And shout out to Freddy Krueger, man, my favorite, not just horror movie, but my favorite cinematic movie ever. And let me tell you why. They had, I think, a hundred thousand dollar budget for this whole thing. So you gotta pay, no, it was a million. My bad, it was a million. But this was back in the days when they were already spending 20, 30 million on movies. So they had to take a million. They had to get Robert England, who was made famous by that miniseries V. You remember the yeah. one that just came back? Robert England was in the original one. So he was hot, just like, what's his name, John Stapleton or John something? He was the cop, uh, Nancy's dad. Yeah. He was, he was popular too, so they cost probably half the budget just between the two of them. Probably 500K gone there. And then just to get the design of his face, bro, like that shit's intricate, took a long time. So what they did was they found ways to cut corners, like the iconic scene where Nancy's falling asleep and the, the fucking crucifix shakes loose off the wall mm -hmm. and then the wall and you see Freddy Krueger coming in, like, you know how they did that? Mm -hmm. So they basically took a wall, knocked the wall out and took like how we how we would have like a green screen that fit the whole wall yeah and he literally just pushed his face up against it and ran his fingers up and down it you know what mm -hmm. i mean so That's crazy yeah imagine what you would have had to spend through graphics at that time to make that happen mm. so yeah and it, wow. and, it, and, it, and there was something about it not being really funny like freddy krueger was like really on a mission to punish the next generation of these yeah. kids for you know what i mean it wasn't no friendly shit and the way he would fuck with them like whenever he was running after the the Tina chick when she go try to stumble inside he's like hey Tina and she turns around and he just cuts his fucking fingers off oh, like wow. and it, it, it'll fuck with your with your psyche try watching that bitch alone in the dark in your house on some, some LSD on some LSD because I've done it before you know what I mean LSD. I've done it before and it was great Look, LSD's nuts in your listen uh, we encourage no no because we're on YouTube we don't encourage the use of any drugs but we do encourage the uh, finding of one's own spirit. So however you got to do that, do that. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. All right. So number six. six. Number six. What are your favorite five features in your career? Man. Tell you, uh, come with the hard ones. Number five. Um, I got a record with an artist. Uh, you know what I'm saying? From Oak Cliff. His name is Cuban Kenny. Shout out to Cuban you know Kenny. Shout out to the whole Pomey movement. Shout out to everybody in BFL. In, uh, in the middle of the cliff, you mm. know what I'm saying? So that's one of my favorite Legendary. records. And uh, it was because, you know, just kind of bridging two different brands. Been knowing it for a very long time, so uh, it was good to do that record and, and be able to, uh, you know what I'm saying, bridge in my my brand with somebody else, you know, and somebody that I was I was standing on the same corners with, too. So. Cool. But uh, that's number five. Number four. Uh, me and Lil Ronnie, we got a, uh, uh, we got a record, we got a couple records, you know what I'm saying? I think Lil Ronnie is one of the, a dope, dope artist and, definitely dope. Um, uh, you know, definitely killing a lot of, a lot of artists' mainstream, too. So, shout out to Lil Ronnie. Ronnie. Um, you know what I'm saying? Number three, uh, I would say, uh, Man, I don't do a lot of features. You know what I'm saying? That's why I asked that question. I wanted to do something that'll really make you have to dive through the whole career and find. Yeah, I don't do a lot of features. Um, I would say uh, I got a record with classic music. Okay. I'll throw in some more and um, big like strip club type anthem record. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shout out to classic music. Salutes, classic music, uh, talented artists. Number artist. two, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go. I got. I gotta put legendary there. Nice. Uh, you know because the record just as a whole was just dope. I don't know, man. Like everything that we did from just with the, the shoot, shoot, with the with the with the directing and it was different. The truth, what we did, you know what I'm saying? As far as just putting out, you know, our all into making sure the record was right when we were in the booth. Shout out to Wait, man. Big shouts out um, to Wait. Shout out to Wait. You Big know. shouts out to fucking Blurry Visions though for yeah. that video. Thank definitely. you, Blurry. Definitely. If you don't have the blur on it, then it's not right. You gotta mix yeah, it, man. Did his thing on that, so. That record number one, man, I had a bucket list record, you know, and it's gonna drop on the first. Mm. Uh, Some we ain't even heard yet. Me and Tum Tum got a record called OG Status. Nice. You know what I'm saying? So Tum Tum from DSR. Big shouts know, out to Tum. That's my bucket list, you know, from my Dallas, who I wanna network with, who I wanna be on the same record with, you know, like I learned a lot from Tum Tum, so. Uh, it's gonna be on um, DJ Papa Run, Cocaine Audio that drops on the first on live mixtapes. Mm, so I'll be sure to that. grab that. What about you, Blur? Gotta grab that live grab mixtapes. It. You know, gotta get it. Gotta get it. You know, it's like a hot cake. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's go ahead. Let's see. I got number seven right now. Who is your favorite female lyricist? Wow, I it just don't have put, to be locally either. No, nah, I just put this up, and I mean. I'm just gonna be honest, you know. I shout out to all the OGs, MC Light, you know what I'm saying, you know, Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah, Latifah Latifah, man, I had to throw her ass in there. You know, shout out to all of them, man, but like right now, honestly and truly, and she don't get a lot of, like, to me, a lot of to respect. I feel like she's a young MA. Mm. Bro, game on point. Young MA mm. is nice. Nice. Very um, lyrical. Nice on the bars. Like, you know, shout out to all the other, you know, female, you know, Rappers, you know, but young and May, she's nice, nice. And and uh and uh, what's a God, man? What's that other chick named Bloodbath? I can't remember her name. I think she's from Houston. But uh, uh, man, I think let me let me let me before before I gotta I gotta put her up there because she she's uh. Michelle, look through Google. Yeah, uh, hello. Yeah, hello, Google. blood. Yeah, bloodbath. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bloodbath. Shout out. So, yeah. so those are my two my two favorites. Right now. All right. Um, let me see. Um, do you have any career regrets at all? Not to be no. confused with, do you have any regrets at all? Which no, was another career. Question. Yes. Career regrets. Career um, regrets. No, nah, I mean, you know, not really. You know, I don't really have no regrets. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, just everything I learned got put me where I am right now. You know what I'm saying? Lessons. Like, Fair yeah. enough. Fair yeah, enough. Lessons. Okay. What we got next? All right, let's see. Um, who is your top? Five favorite rappers, dead or alive. You knew we were gonna ask you this at the Rock Dead or show. alive. Right? Had to. What would you say? Um, so we're gonna do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it in Texas. Like you know, my number five in Texas is uh, is UGK. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, big boy. That's my top five. Keeping it. Uh, big. You know, I mean, riding dirty. I mean. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's too many too many albums from UGK that I could go through. Like Pocket Full of Stones, like the record Pocket Full of Stones. You know, I so it's just a bunch of records from UGK all the way around. Um, number four, Outkast. Uh, notice I'm noticing I'm doing groups because I was a big groups fan. Like so, like I love like you know Outkast. So fuck it, top five groups. groups. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's my top uh, number three, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm, that's yeah, one of that's my favorites too. Man, Classic. You know what I'm saying? Established 1999. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? God. You know, that was one of my favorite projects. Even how they pushed in the Mo Thugs and they just keep on doing like a fucking I, spider I, web. I, I went through puberty and that was what I was jamming. Yeah. You know, when I was like. Same. Hashtag same. Hello, me too. Uh, <laughs> hashtag same over here. Yeah. Uh, number two. Um. Dipset. Mm. Man. Shouts out to my nigga Cameron. Man. My nigga Jewels. My nigga Jimmy. Man, I'm glad that was on your top five. Should be on everybody's top five. Hello, top yeah. five. Dipset, yeah. one top of five. my top, man. Jewels was like one of my favorite artists in the 2000s, you know what I'm saying? So, um, number one. Number one. Number one. Ooh. Okay. 
Wu Tang, man. Oh, mm. that was an unexpected answer. I ain't gonna bullshit. Whoa, man, come on, bro. RZA. I mean, bro. Like, I mean, we could go Rakim, down. Rakim, Method, I mean, Red, Ghostface. That was a fucking Method. fire group, dog. Like, we talking about? They got a whole. Street. Those are legends. They got a whole street named after them. Facts. You know so it's just kind of like. Have you heard of the new Wu? Their no. sons, all their sons started this such a new okay. woo. The all new woo. Y'all go on YouTube and look up the new woo. These motherfuckers are just as nice. Okay. Just as nice. Okay. Yeah, all bars, out, no games. You know? Yeah, those, those are my... I, I wanted to do groups, so... Yeah. I, I, I love that top five. And, uh, you know, before we get out of here, Rico, um, I, wa I want you to tell all the fans of the show, which will be the millions... Ten millions coming soon. Yeah. What do so, we? What can we expect uh, from you the third and fourth quarters of 2020? Okay, I'm so, interested. All right, so you know, what I'm saying top of the year took care of the first quarter into the second quarter. That's still gonna push our way through the year. Like you know, January gonna be here in a minute. We're gonna be, mm -hmm. yeah. be partying. I'm back is what's out right now. Uh, produced by Kirk McGirt. Shout out you know to Kirk. Y'all go get that. It's on our streaming platforms. Mm. I'm fixing to drop the plain way, which is a tape I already dropped already, but I'm gonna drop it on our platforms probably next week. Perfect. Um, it's hosted mm -hmm. by um, uh, Core DJ Tuss. Okay. And uh, so I'm gonna make sure that y'all got you know y'all got that. And I'm also uh, I'm dropping my EP. If I we might drop an album. I don't know, but I really want to drop the EP. Is really done. I got records that's already done. I just want to make sure that I put the right records together. Okay. So you have a good track record of doing that, so yeah. I'm, I'm not really worried. I think I think I think whatever you choose to do the rest of 2020 is going to be like crazy. Now everybody knows mm -hmm. I wanted to invite you out to be a special judge oh, yeah. on the very first Wolfpack Battle League. I want to do this bitch Definitely. close to Halloween. I started out I started out battling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know I started out battling, freestyling, OK 104 and shit like that. So it's done deal. We got that. We're doing something different. You know, like uh, it'll all be here at Dark Phoenix and um, it's it's we're going to bring Disaster out for the first one to host. You know what cool. I mean? So shit's going to be nuts, Definitely. bro. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to ask you one more thing before we head out of here, man. Um, with all the success that you've collected on this comeback trail, I, I don't want you to give your advice. You know the regular shit people ask. I want Stay you to focused. give. I want yeah. I want okay. you to give God first. Yeah. I want you to give give <laughs> advice not not, not to the next up and coming rapper. Mm -hmm. I want to get. I want you to give your advice to the rappers that are in their thirties mm -hmm. that are thinking about stopping, uh, that are frustrated. What? How do you keep on going, and what do you recommend for them to do? I exfoliate. No. Yeah. <laughs> they don't uh, love you until they blossom. Yeah, yeah, do they? Exfoliate. <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta, Legendary. Like, you gotta, you gotta be able to put with what you love to do, and be able to be relatable to the people. Now, my music is relatable to people of all ages right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the kids are making dance videos to the music, and I'm posting it. You know, the strippers. Fucking with it hard, you know the OGs are fucking with it. I got a dude in 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 Ohio that's this guy like has 50. somebody everywhere. I've seen him. Like you know what I'm saying? 50 that everywhere. They used, I'm back behind their his 50th birthday. I'm back. Uh, I saw party that. Yeah, because old, I guess they got raided by the they got raided by the police or something because they got a strip club and they said the strip club was. Posing as a lingerie shop or whatever, mm. but they got a new building and came back. So like they use my shit for that. They shit. back, yeah. bitch. Yeah, yeah they Ohio, back, you know what bitch. I'm saying? Yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share the video and shit. Y'all follow me on on uh, Instagram, Facebook, PJ Ricochet and uh, PJ Rico on Snap. I'm uh, PJ Rico two one four on Snap, and you know I got a bunch of crazy shit. But and tell them too. Don't type in Ricochet on the music platforms. It's PJ Ricochet. Yeah, it's now. PJ Ricochet, man. If you want the new shit. If like, you want the new yeah, PJ stands for Plain Jane. You know, it's my it's my brand, my LLC, me and my two partners, Hot Times and Yano. And uh, you know, so I added the PJ to Ricochet because I have a brand. I'm a legitimate business owner and we're a black owned business and we have a multimedia company. Mm. And we also do a lot of other stuff. We do some contracting for different things that you might need put together in your office or your home. Stuff like that, so we doing that too, you know. Uh, we get, we painting, you know what I'm saying? Painting your uh, your you space done? up and whatever what you, you need, need done. done. What so, you need done? Uh, but yeah, so we got, you know, we got that. But 
You know, just be look out on the lookout for the EP, the play, uh, two playing for TV. Uh, two playing for TV. Two playing. Um, that's the name. And uh, I'm out. Uh, we about to shoot the Black America uh, video with me and Young Sire. Oh, that's yeah. one of my favorite songs. I got like, a sneak peek, but y'all you know, everybody it. did that. You know, you we, know need to, we need to keep the peace song and all of that. You know, but I'm more militant than that. Malcolm. So Malcolm. Get home. I think y'all gonna really fuck with that. So we finna shoot the video. I have a